Hello, Discovery Learners. It is I, Teacher Liz, here, your host once more for this episode of Ability to Learn from the Discovery Day program. It's Monday, so of course I have new observances, history lessons, animals and plants to see, a new place to explore, and of course some Spanish words to learn. And be sure you're logging in for the Zoom sessions provided to you every day by the Discovery Educational Team. So let's not delay anymore. Let's start the show. And now for our daily observances. Hey, Discovery Learners. It's me, Andrew, with our first observance, National Fruit Compote Day. Each year on March 1st, National Fruit Compote Day presents a celebration filled with sweet berries, citrus, and stone fruits to delight the senses. The word compote is French for mixture. A compote is dessert originating in 17th century France. The French believed that fruit cooked in sugar syrup balanced the humidity's effect on the body and led them to invent compotes. Recipes call for whole pieces of fruit or mixtures of fruit and sugar syrup. The whole fruits are cooked in water with sugar added with spices that complemented the berries or fruits in the compote. Common flavors in compotes are vanilla, lemon peel, orange peel, cinnamon sticks, cinnamon powder, cloves, ground almonds, grated coconut, candied fruit, and raisins. Compote is a very diverse food. You can serve it warm or cold. The French initially served compotes in the afternoon with a snack with sour cream and biscuits. During the Renaissance, people began serving compotes chilled at the end of dinner. Because of its simplicity, inexpensive ingredients, and no dairy products, the compote became a staple of Jewish households throughout Europe and was considered part of Jewish cuisine. Fruit compote is often topped with whipped cream, cinnamon, or vanilla sugar. It is also sometimes prepared using dry foods soaked in alcohol, like rum, so it becomes a saucy dessert. How can you observe National Fruit Compote Day? Well, you can try a compote for the first time, or if you know what a compote is and have had it before, you can try your favorites. Let us know in the comment section below if you've ever had compote before, or which one's your favorite. This observance is National Horse Protection Day. March 1st highlights the plight of the horses in America and beyond. The day aims to help thousands of unwanted horses in this country find forever homes. The horse holds a legendary mystique in the American culture. In North America, the legendary horse is embedded in our culture and runs deep in the roots of our history. As the country grew, our indebtedness to the horse grew too. While few people see the horse as much more than a recreational animal, they still serve on work ranches, as therapy animals, horses relieve the symptoms of PTSD, anxiety, and other disorders. However, despite their legendary status, many go unwanted, abused, or neglected. National Horse Protection Day is about addressing those issues. Several organizations support horse rescue, rehabilitation, and adoption. Their programs offer shelter and veterinary care for horses that have been neglected or abused. Many of them provide sanctuary where the horses live out the remainder of their lives. Once rehabilitated, many of the horses can become available for adoption. I wish I had a big enough place for a few horses. All of these services require funds, volunteers, and education for the general public. Food, medical supplies, shelter, and the training and time and money it takes, depending upon the condition of the horse, costs add up. How can you observe National Horse Protection Day? You can help spread awareness. You can start by sharing a story in the comment section below about your favorite horse movie. Our next observance is Peanut Butter Lover's Day. March 1st was made for National Peanut Butter Lover's Day. Ah, peanut butter. One day is not enough to recognize peanut butter. The goober has been paired with so many things with tasty results. You know, peanut butter doesn't just make a great sandwich. It's also pretty interesting too. It takes about 540 peanuts to make a 12 ounce jar of peanut butter. One of my favorite candies, the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, was introduced to America in 1928. The oldest operating manufacturer and seller of peanut butter has begun selling peanut butter since 1898. An old TV show called Mr. Ed used peanut butter to make it look like the horse was talking. That's wacky. And us Americans spend almost $800 million on peanut butter every single year. That's crazy. But you know what isn't crazy? Putting a comment down below in the comment section telling us what kind of peanut butter is your favorite. I like chunky paired with grape jelly. Our final observance is 
National Pig Day. It's observed every March 1st and recognizes the domestication of pigs. This holiday includes events and is celebrated at zoos, schools, nursing homes, and sporting events. Pig parties, pig parades, and gatherings with pig collectibles are a few of the other commemorative things to do on National Pig Day. Pigs are very clever and intelligent animals. However, most people are not aware of their high level of intelligence. Some are household pets and can be trained and taught tricks. In Dublin in 1772, a trained swine called the Learned Pig told time, counted, and other such tricks to entertain crowds on the streets. How cool is that? Pigs have been very popular in storybook characters for generations, from Piglet to Wilbur. Pigs have an endearing and flavorful quality about them that makes us love them so much. There are hundreds of different breeds, most of which descend from the Eurasian wild boar. The female is called the gilt or sow and can produce 10 piglets in a single litter. They also produce bacon, ham, baby back ribs, spare ribs, sirloin, pork belly, and oh, many more delectable barbecue items. It would be a shame not to honor the swine on this day. How can you observe National Pig Day? Well, you can cozy up and watch one of your favorite pig movies, like a Winnie the Pooh movie or Babe Pig in the City. Let us know what you're going to do in the comment section below. On this day in history. Today, on March 1st, 1872, Yellowstone becomes the world's first national park. Also today, March 1st, 1941, Captain America, created by cartoonists Joe Simon and Jack Kirby, is first published by Timely Comics. Wow, isn't history awesome? Notable figures born on this day. Our first notable figure born today is Ron Howard, born March 1st, 1954 in Duncan, Oklahoma. This American director, producer, and actor first became known as Andy Griffith's son, Opie, on The Andy Griffith Show. He also played teenager Richie Cunningham on Happy Days. His 2001 film, Beautiful Mind, received the Academy Award for Best Picture and earned Howard the Academy Award for Best Director. He also directed films such as Apollo 13 and Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Before he was famous, he studied film at University of Southern California, but dropped out before graduating. And unbeknownst to most people, he served as executive producer and narrator on the popular comedy series Arrested Development. He turns 67 years old today. Happy birthday, Ron. Our next notable figure born today is Don Lemon. Born March 1st, 1966 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. This American news anchor who rose to fame by hosting a popular CNN newsroom program. He had previously worked for both NBC and MSNBC. Before he was famous, while attending Brooklyn College, he began his journalistic career as a news assistant on Channel 5 in New York City. He turned 55 years old today. Happy birthday, Don! Our next notable figure born today is someone all you wrestling fans may know pretty well, Booker T. Born March 1st, 1965 in Houston, Texas. This American wrestler is also known as King Booker. He won more than 30 championships in the WWE, WCW, and the TNA, also credited for creating the Spinner Rooney. Before he was famous, his parents unfortunately died when he was 14 years old. But that's when his older brother stepped in and raised him and his siblings. Him and his brother, Lane Stevie Ray Huffman, formed the Harlem Heat, which won an unprecedented 10 WCW World Tag Team Championships. He turns 56 years old today. Wow! Happy birthday, Booker T! Another notable figure born today is Lupita Yango. Born March 1st, 1983 in Mexico City, Mexico. This Mexican slash Kenyan actress made her film debut in the powerful 2013 film 
12 Years a Slave, for which she won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. She also portrayed the character Maz Katana in Star Wars and Nakia in Marvel's Black Panther. In 2019, she starred in the horror film Us. Before she was famous, she graduated from Hampshire College with a degree in film and theater. Later, she attended Yale School of Drama. She turns 38 years old today. Happy birthday, Lupita. And our last little figure born today is Dustin Bieber. Born March 1st, 1994 in London, Canada. This Canadian pop singer is a sensation who propelled into fame after his 2010 YouTube video single, Baby, which actually became an international hit. His first album, My World 2.0, debuted at number one in the US Billboard 200 and went on to sell over 5 million copies worldwide. Subsequently, his next three studio albums debuted at number one in the US Billboard 200, making him one of the world's best-selling music artists. Before he was famous, he kept singing his aspirations to himself when he was younger and played chess, soccer, and hockey until uploading a cover of Neo's So Sick onto YouTube in 2007. His album, My World 2.0, was nominated for a Grammy Award for Best Pop Vocal Album in 2011. He turns 27 years old today. Happy birthday, Dustin. Happy birthday, everyone. Come along as we take a journey to the place of the week. This week we are traveling to Argentina. Can you hear that instrumental music in the background? But of course, that's the national anthem of Argentina. Sounds delightful, doesn't it? Now let's take a deeper look at the national flag. This horizontally striped blue, white, blue national flag also has a brown bordered central golden sun. The story behind the sun on the flag comes from when they first proclaimed independence from Spain. The sun on the flag is called the Sun of May, which was added to the center of the flag in reference of the events of May 1810, when the sun supposedly shone through the clouds. This current iteration of the flag has been in use since February 25th, 1818. Wow, pretty neat. And actually, a lot of the flags in South America and some flags in Central America have baby blue and white on them. Hmm, pretty interesting. Let's go ahead and move on to learn more about Argentina. Argentina is a country located in South America. It covers the most of southern portion of the continent. It's also the world's eighth largest country. To give you some perspective, it occupies an area more extensive than Mexico, and the U.S. state of Texas combined. Argentina also claims portion of Antarctica, as well as several islands in the South Atlantic. Argentina's official name is Republica Argentina, which means Argentine Republic. Its form of government is a federal republic with two legislative houses, the Senate and the Chamber of Deputies and its official head of government is a president. Argentina's capital is Buenos Aires, and the official language spoken is Spanish. The most popular religion in Argentina is Christianity, and its main monetary unit is the Argentinian peso. One US dollar equals 89 Argentinian pesos. Wow, you could buy a lot of stuff over there for one dollar. The current population in Argentina is 43,377,000 people. Argentina also has a total area of 1,073,520 square miles. And like I had stated earlier, that is roughly about the size of the U.S. state of Texas combined with the country of Mexico. That is big. The main exports of Argentina are oil, next is corn, and the most money-making Argentinian industries are banking, followed closely second by food processing and packaging. Wow, Argentina sounds like a pretty neat place. 
I never heard of that musical, Evita? That takes place here in Argentina, in Buenos Aires to be exact. Wow, sounds like a pretty neat place, and I can't wait to teach you more. So be sure to tune in every day for Ability to Learn as we teach you more about Argentina. Here is the animal of the day. Today's animal is the pig. It is an even-toed ungulate that belongs to the family of pigs. Domestic pigs are a subspecies of wild boar. It has been domesticated 13,000 to 12,700 years BC. Separate domestication of pigs took place in China 8,000 years ago. There are more than 500 types of pig and 2 billion pigs around the world today. They are kept in farms mostly as a source of meat. But domesticated pigs make great pets. They can be 35 to 71 inches in length and weigh from 110 pounds all the way up to 770 pounds. Pigs have thick pinkish and brownish skin covered with sparse hair. Some have little spots all over them. They have a distinct look with a large head, elongated snout, small eyes, triangular ears, and a large body with short stubby legs. Pigs have large, round discs of cartilage on top of their snout, which are flexible yet rigid. They use it for digging in soil when they search for food. Pigs have even been trained to sniff out truffles, the most expensive type of mushroom. Pigs are omnivores, which means they like to eat different types of vegetables, fruit, bugs, fungus, and roots aka meat and plant eaters. Pigs have 44 teeth. Canine teeth in males are even transform into large tusks. Pigs are very intelligent and curious animals. According to some studies, pigs are smarter than a three-year-old kid or dog. Did you know that pigs wallow in water and mud to prevent overheating? So it's not just because they want to play in the mud. Pigs are very social animals. They create close bonds with the other members of their group, and they keep physical contact even during the night by pushing their noses together and dream just like people do. Despite their size, pig can reach up to the speeds of 11 miles per hour. That's faster than me. Pigs use 20 different sounds to express their feelings. They are best known for squeals and oinks and grunt noises, but it all means something. The average lifespan of a pig is 6 to 10 years. Boy, well, I learned a lot about piggies today. Did you learn anything new? Let us know in the comment section below, Discovery Learners. The plant of the day. Today's plant is the plum. The plum is a deciduous plant that belongs to the rose family. There are more than 200 varieties of plums that are derived from two basic types, European and the Japanese plum. Exact origin of the European plum is unknown, but researchers believe that the type of fruit has been cultivated even in ancient times. Despite the name, Japanese plum originates from China. Cultivation in Japan started 300 to 400 years ago. The plum is mostly cultivated in temperate to warm areas around the world. This plant requires direct sunlight and moist, well-drained, fertile soil. People cultivate plums mostly because of their fruit. Some varieties of plums are cultivated for ornamental purposes because of their beautiful flowers. Here are some interesting plum facts. Plums usually grow around 10 to 20 feet in height and develops the crown of the same dimensions. The plum tree itself has reddish to brown bark that is smooth in young trees and furrowed in older trees. Shape and size of the leaves depend on the variety. Some types of plums have oblong leaves with pointed tips, while others have oval leaves that are serrated on the edges. Leaves are usually about 2 to 4 inches long and green in color. They become yellow, orange, and purple in the autumn. Fruit-bearing trees develop miniature white flowers, while flowering trees, which does not produce fruit, develop pink flowers arranged in clusters. Insects such as honeybees are the main pollinators of this flower. Plums belong to the group of stone fruit, which means it has a single seed protected within the pit. The pit is firmly attached to the surrounding flesh, known as the clean stone type, or it can be easily separated from its flesh known as the free stone type. Plums have smooth skin that can be yellow, green, red, or purple in color. The flesh is juicy and varies in color from yellow to red. Varieties with red flesh contain more sugar and have a sweeter taste compared to varieties with yellow flesh. 
Production of fruit starts three to five years after planting. Productivity starts to decline after the 10th year. Plum is a rich source of vitamin C and K and dietary fibers. Sugar content depends on the variety. Plums can also be used raw in the form of juices, jellies, marmalades, and cakes. Dried plums, also known as prunes, are often consumed during the winter when fresh fruit is not available. High content of dietary fibers facilitate emptying of the bowels. Fresh fruit and dried plums can be used as a natural laxative. Actually, we covered that a few weeks ago. Plums can survive up to 20 years when it is cultivated under optimal conditions. Wow, I like plums. I also like prunes. What about you? Do you like plums? And how do you eat them? Go ahead and let us know in the comment section below. And now for the word of the day. Today's word is rhyme. It's a noun. It means correspondence of sound between words or the endings of words, especially when these are used at the ends of lines in poetry. Rhyme. Our next word is a word you may have heard somewhere in today's episode. That word is compote. It's a noun. It means fruit preserved or cooked in syrup. A dish consisting of fruit salad or stewed fruit, often with syrup. Compote. Hola, Discovery Learners. So yo, tu maestra Liz. Hello, Discovery Learners. It is I, your teacher Liz. And, ese es tu español, la palabra de la semana. What that means is, here's your Spanish word of the week. Su palabra para esta semana es, chaqueta, 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 which means, jacket, chaqueta, jacket. Chaqueta. Now let's use jacket in a phrase. Ponte la chaqueta. Ponte la chaqueta. Ponte la chaqueta. Which means, wear your jacket. Ponte la chaqueta. Wear your jacket. Ponte la chaqueta. Don't forget to wear your jacket. Go ahead and practice speaking Spanish all week long by saying, Ponte la chaqueta. It is a little nippy out there, so don't forget to ponte la chiqueta. Hasta la semana que viene, Discovery Learners. Be sure to tune in next Monday to learn another Spanish word of the week right here on Ability to Learn. Hey, Discovery Learners, it's me, Andrew. This week, we're going to celebrate the life of Dr. Seuss by taking a look at some of his greatest works. Our first Dr. Seuss film adaptation is The Cat in the Hat. This PG film from 2003 has a 1 hour and 25 minute runtime. It stars Mike Myers as The Cat in the Hat and Dakota Fanning and is available on YouTube. Up next is Horton Hears a Who. This 2008 family film has a rating of G, a 1 hour and 28 minute runtime, and stars Jim Carrey as Horton and Steve Carell and is available on Disney Plus. And in keeping with our Dr. Seuss theme, The Lorax, rated PG. This 2012 adventure film has a 1 hour and 35 minute runtime. It stars Zac Efron and Danny DeVito as The Lorax. You can find it on Netflix. Let's take a deeper look at this cinematic work of art. This week's cinematic work of art is The Grinch Who Stole Christmas, rated PG from the year 2000. It has a 1 hour and 44 minute runtime and was directed by birthday boy Ron Howard, narrated by Anthony Hopkins and stars Jim Carrey as The Grinch and Jeffrey Tambor as The Mayor. The Grinch Who Stole Christmas, one of my favorite things to watch on Christmas, and this iteration in particular. Jim Carrey manages to take the Grinch, a two-dimensional character from a book, and you might remember from the animated movie, by the same name, right from the pages and brings him to light in spectacular fashion. The artistry 
that is involved in making this film is phenomenal. They spare no expense and great attention to detail, making sure we are enveloped in the world of Whoville. We get to sing the songs that we read on the pages as children ourselves. The costuming and set design is impeccable, making regular old human beings look like a big hairy Grinch. And the Who's of Whoville. Jim Carrey's antics bring to life a character in such a way that you're able to connect with him and he becomes more than just a mean old Grinch, making this film a cinematic work of art. And at least for this announcer, it helped me grow my heart two sizes this day. Here is today's interesting fact. Did you know that Dr. Seuss doesn't just make children's books? Yes, we all know him for his nursery rhymes and Horton Hears a Who, The Grinch Stole Christmas and so on, but that's not what he's always done. In fact, he had a lucrative career as an advertiser, making cartoons for companies like Ford. In fact, he was employed by the Standard Oil Company of New Jersey for over 13 years. He made $12,000 per year. That was back in 1928, which means he was making a lot of money. Pretty interesting stuff, right? In fact, the oil company actually owned an insecticide brand. During that time, he created a slogan for him. It was, Quick Henry, get the flip. His slogan, paired with his artwork, made the company a bunch of money. In fact, a household brand. It was just a little bit before our time. We only know him for his later works. I think it's fitting we give Dr. Seuss a couple facts, one of which is kind of kooky and spooky, and that is the jumping spider is named after the Lorax, Lapsia Lorax. They named it that because of the yellow markings near its mouth, which resemble the mustache of the Lorax. And I think the last fact should be kind of funny, just like a Dr. Seuss book. Did you know he's credited with inventing the word nerd? His book, If I Ran the Zoo, he said a nurkle, a nerd, a seer sucker. When he was asked about it later, he had said he never heard the word before. He thinks it might be derived from Nerdfogel, which I'm sure you all know about, he joked. Which means he just made it up. Can you believe that, Discovery Learners? Dr. Seuss led quite a life. Tell us if you learned anything new about Dr. Seuss and maybe heard a who in the comment section below. Aw, we all know what that song means means we reached the end of today's episode of Ability to Learn. I had fun, and I hope you had fun too. But not only had fun, I hope you learned something as well. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you're notified for all the fun here on Ability to Learn from the Discovery Day Program. This is Teacher Liz signing out. Farewell, Discovery Learners. I will see you next time.